These are my five digital wellness tips that actually work. With literally everything being digital, it's become more and more important to ensure that we prioritize our well-being and mental health when it comes to our online habits. So with our phones and social media and literally constant connectivity, it's like no matter where you go, you're connected to the net. It's so easy to get caught up in the digital world and end up neglecting our mental health and even our physical health. However, by implementing these five digital wellness tips, you can get back control and create more of a healthier relationship with technology. Now, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. Don't forget I'm over on Instagram too, so it'd be great to see you there. Now let's get started with this. Set boundaries and establish digital free zones. One really effective way to maintain digital wellness is by setting boundaries and creating those like digital free zones within your home or even just within your daily routine. It doesn't have to just be at home, but just generally creating those zones and having a boundary in place to ensure that you know right now it's a no digital area. There's no technology going on. So a good idea would be to designate certain times during the day. So I just spoke about areas, but you can also talk about like timing as well. So you could set parts of your home or your workplace where there is no digital technology or anything going on so that you know that space is your one space where you go, where you leave everything behind. It could be a specific area within your home, like a certain chair. When you sit on that chair, you know there's no phone, there's nothing like that. That's your little bubble of just getting away from this digital world. And then you can, on top of that, specify certain times during the day. So for example, when it's lunchtime, when it comes to eating anything, you're not sitting scrolling on your phone. Spend that time where it's just you and whatever it is that you're doing. Because honestly, I've realized over time too, that there are certain times that I don't actually end up enjoying the basic things that I do. You forget that you've even eaten because you're too busy, like on your phone, like you need to have a little bit of me time. And that me time shouldn't involve scrolling on, in, on Instagram or whatever it is that you're on. And I know it may sound really kind of, I don't know, just weird to you, but you really want to think about enjoying these little things that you're doing, having your lunch, just enjoying that, spending a little bit of time just reading a book or something like that. Something that doesn't involve having to be on your like iPad. Like if you're going to read a book, read a book, a paper book. There's nothing like that feeling of a book. I would, I don't think I could ever go to something like Kindle just because I feel like I like that oldness of that book. I like that. I like that being something that isn't a screen, you know, something that I can flip the page and the feel of the paper, but that's just me. By setting these kind of specific times or places within your home, you're allowing yourself to fully engage like in the present moment. You're allowing yourself to fully engage in the present moment and focus on just that moment without all the noise and disruption that technology can bring. Practice mindful usage. Mindful usage involves basically being intentional and aware of how you use technology. Instead of mindlessly kind of scrolling on Instagram or getting lost in like this rabbit hole because I know it ha it's happened to me. It happens to me quite a lot. I've learned that I have to really think and think to myself, no, you need to stop. Like, what are you doing right now? How have you wasted 10 minutes just literally scroll scrolling and you've not learned anything? Like make a conscious effort to engage in things that actually bring you some level of fulfillment. Set goals for your digital usage. Like how long are you going to be using your phone for? If you do want to scroll, scroll. I'm not saying don't scroll. We all love a bit of scrolling, but dedicate a certain amount of time so that you know I haven't overspent that time on this mindless thing that I'm doing, but I've managed to do it anyway. So, you know, I've done it, but now I can really focus on what I want to get done. Prioritize sleep and manage your screen time. So you've all heard about you shouldn't be on your phone just before bed. You've heard about blue light. Well, that's something that you really do need to take into consideration. And I've learned as well, like the first thing that I do when I get in bed was usually like go on my phone. And now what I've done is made sure I take my book with me. In the morning, I take it from my bedside table and bring it into the lounge so that I can read in the morning with my coffee. And I take it in the evening to my bedside table so that I can read in the evening before I go to sleep. I know I'm doing something think, but I'm doing something that's letting me absorb information, which doesn't involve screens. I'm not getting that blue light. It's not going to like disrupt my sleep in any way, but I'm still managing to do something. So it will be good if you could like establish digital curfew. So the same way that you may have like a timing that you usually go to sleep, tell yourself that, right, if I'm going to go to sleep at 10 PM, then at nine or nine 30, that's going to be the last time I look at my phone. I don't want to look at my phone after that. So I'm going to set my alarm, do whatever I need to on there first, and then put it to sleep so that I can just 
enjoy the last half an hour, an hour at least of just me time and nothing to do with my phone. You don't really wanna go to sleep looking at your phone and then wake up looking at your phone. Cultivate healthy digital habits. So in order to maintain digital wellness, it's really important to develop digital healthy habits. Start by decluttering your phone. Get rid of anything that you don't need on it. I do this every so often and it honestly really helps because sometimes I see my phone and I'm like, I am feeling so overwhelmed right now because there is so much on my phone. Like there's so many pictures, there are so many things that I've maybe screenshot because I, at that point, I'm like, I'll look at this later because I really wanna do something with it or it's given me an idea. But then later on when I look at it, I'm like, I didn't even look at this and now I don't even know why I even screenshot it or why I saved it. So you really want to get rid of any unused stuff on your phone and declutter it. And that's not just pictures and everything. That's also apps and things like that. Another great way to develop kind of healthy digital habits is something that I love. I actually love doing this and that's unsubscribing from newsletters because I don't know about you, but I get subscribed to newsletters that I never even subscribe to. Like randomly, it will be like, thank you for subscribing. I'm like, I didn't subscribe to you. It's just so weird how this all works and how companies are even allowed to do this or somehow find some ridiculous little loophole that they end up doing it with. It gives me such satisfaction unsubscribing. So what I like to do is I go through my email and I just literally spend at least half an hour unsubscribing. And it's so therapeutic because I'm just like basically saying, you can get lost. I'm not interested, <laughs> I'm not interested. Didn't want you here to begin with, don't want you here now. So yeah, you can just unsubscribe from things. Like it honestly feels so good because sometimes you just become so used to random stuff coming in your inbox and you just delete them. And you're like, it just becomes a habit. What you can actually do to help that is just unsubscribe from them in the first place. Look after your offline connections and self-care. Even though technology has made it so much easier for us to connect with people, and I love that about technology, it's also really important to remember your offline connections. It's not just about who you've connected with online. What about all the connections you had before technology? Or if you're not from that time, then I don't know how I can make you understand that. But basically, what about your connections that have nothing to do with technology? What about the connections that you created that weren't on technology? It's really important to look after those connections connections too and you don't always have to only connect via technology like make an effort to actually spend time with someone like face to face rather than just checking in online do things that are offline so for example create a hobby do something where you can actually catch up with people outside you know in the open air and do something something that is really going to kind of give you that self care because you're looking after yourself doesn't involve technology doesn't involve doing something online it's you start a new class start a new hobby hobby, something that really helps you to connect with people physically as opposed to just kind of online and behind a screen. Honestly, I can't begin to tell you how much this is going to help to really nourish your mind and nourish your soul. It's going to make you feel so much better. I can honestly tell you, I can guarantee you, it will make you feel just so fulfilled with the fact that you've done that. It just makes you feel good. And who doesn't want to feel good? So ultimately in a world that is just nearly all everything is digital. It's so important. It's even more important to prioritize your digital well-being because it's so important to understand that that isn't the be all and end all, you know? You have to work online. You have to do so many things that are connected to your business online that it's really important to make sure that you take that time offline too, to really connect with people, to connect with yourself as well. Because as much as I've spoken about connecting with people offline and face-to-face, -face, sometimes I feel like we forget about ourselves too. We forget that actually actually we need to connect with ourselves a little bit better. We need to remember that I'm here too, you know, like it isn't just about my phone. It's a shame that your phone can actually control you that much. It's actually crazy. And anything digital, it's just not always the best for us. So really think about how you can do things to put yourself first, which doesn't involve anything which is digital. Because if you can create that nice healthy balance between self-care and your own wellness and your digital life, then that would be great because then you don't feel like you're overusing, you don't feel like you're being completely consumed by the digital world, technology in general. Set your boundaries, create mindfulness when it comes to your digital work, prioritize your sleep, cultivate like healthy habits when it comes to technology, foster your offline connections. There's so much that you can do to really make you feel better about your digital usage and just make you feel better in general. It's not really about kind of disconnecting because I didn't want that to be the premise of this video. It's not about disconnecting 
and turning your phone off. I really wanted you guys to understand that it's about finding a balance that allows you to thrive in both the digital and the physical world. Because we can become so consumed that we forget that I've got my the physical side of me too, you know, and it really affects the mental side of you. So I really do hope that these tips have helped you to rethink things and just kind of like put all of these things into practice and at least a little bit and then hopefully you'll get better and better at it. So if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon.